when the earth is smashed and pounded. Dakka, okay, is to pound, literally to pound and beat until whatever material it is turns to powder and crust. And then you, you can flatten it out. Allah says, Dakka and Dakka, meaning over and over the earth is going to be pounded and pounded and pounded until it turns into nothing but like powder. And it's just spread, just flattened out completely. You know, in the previous surah, Allah made us reflect on how the earth is so vast and the, the, the mountains are so strong, such strong pegs on the earth, right? So, وَإِلَى الْأَرْضِ كَيْفَ سُطِحَتْ وَإِلَى الْجِبَالِ كَيْفَ نُصِبَتْ And now in the surah, He's taking that same earth and He's destroying it. It's completely destroying it. He says, إِذَا دُكَّتِ الْأَرْضُ دَكَّ دَكَّ Now, in the previous ayat, there was all this talk about wealth. Wealth where? On the earth. And you should know, all that you've saved, wherever you've saved it, what's gonna happen to it? It's gonna be crushed, reduced to nothing and flattened. Actually, this is the same word used with Musa alayhi salam. فَلَمَّا تَجَلَّ رَبُّهُ لِلْجَمَلِ جَعَلَهُ دَكَّةً Now anyway, وَجَاءَ رَبُّكَ وَالْمَلَكُ صَفًّا 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 When, and your Lord will descend, and the angels will descend, rows upon rows upon rows, صَفًّا صَفًّا Over and over again, rows upon rows of angels are going to keep descending. It will seem like this never-ending army. Now, previously, Again, understand, they were, they were impressed with their power on the earth. Allah is showing them how He's going to show them His power from the sky. How the, the, the angel, the armies of angels are going to descend upon them, subhanAllah. In the previous surah, we were asked to reflect on the sky, and it's a different kind of reflection now. We were told, وَإِذَا السَّمَاءِ كَيْفَ رُفِعَتْ Didn't they look to the sky how it was elevated? And now on that day, when you look at that sky, the angels are descending. You know, one last thing about this, the, you know, the, them loving inherited, inherited wealth, and them saving it on the earth for them, Allah says about Himself, إِنَّا نَحْنُ نَرِثُ الْأَرْضُ وَمَنْ عَلَيْهَا وَإِلَيْنَا يُرْجَعُونَ We are the ones in fact who are going to inherit the earth. Allah says about Himself, He will be the one to inherit the earth. Do you think you're inheriting the earth? Do you think your children are inheriting the earth from you? Your house, your assets, your property, your car, who's in the end going to inherit the entire earth? It is Allah Azza wa Jal. So, إِنَّا نَحْنُ نَرِثُ الْأَرْضُ وَمَنْ عَلَيْهَا Then he says, سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَجِيءَ يَوْمَئِذٍ بِجَهَنَّمَ On that day then, hellfire, Jahannam will be brought forward. According to some mufassirun and linguists, Jahannam comes from the Arabic word Jahnam, which means torture chamber. Okay? So this torture chamber will be brought forth, dragged forward with chains as we learn. Right? It's going to be brought forward before them. And then in the same ayah, Allah says, يَوْمَ إِذِينَ يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانِ Because these are two lazim and malzum, these are things that are going to happen immediately. So it's not even given the separation of an ayah. يَوْمَ إِذِينَ يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانِ فَأَنَّا وَأَنَّا لَهُ الذِّكْرَ On that day, the human being will remember thoroughly. You know, the word يَتَذَكَّرُ in sarf is completely spelled. And you can have idgham in it, يَذَّكَّرُ Like, أَوْ يَذَّكَّرُ فَتَنْفَعُهُ الذِّكْرَ Right? In the previous surahs we found, the Messenger is, he is told constantly, remind, 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 remind. And the, the, the disbelievers, they refuse to remember. Even remember a little bit, يَذَّكَّرُ it's, When there's a dram, it's a little less. Even just do a little bit of remembrance, nothing. But here now, يَتَذَكَّرُ insan, The human being will make an effort to remember everything completely. And this, what Allah Azza wa is highlighting here is a contrast. In the previous surahs, the Messenger is saying, remember, remember, remember. And do they remember? No. When the hellfire is brought forward, now they themselves are making a thorough effort to remember every last detail. يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانِ وَأَنَّا لَهُ الذِّكْرَ And what's the benefit of reminder at that point? What, what will that reminder do now? وَأَنَّا لَهُ الذِّكْرَ So at that point, them, themselves remembering and them being reminded has no benefit whatsoever. You know, in previous surahs we learned, عَلِمَتْ نَفْسٌ مَا أَحْضَرَتْ عَلِمَتْ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ وَأَخَّرَتْ Every person will know on that day what it has to present for itself. Every person will know what it sent forward, what it left behind. Profound statements about what, what they know. Here they are making a, a conscious effort to remember all the things they used to do. يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانِ وَأَنَّا لَهُ الذِّكْرَ and what is it that, they, that comes out of their mouth when they start remembering everything that they had done? Everything. They'll remember all of their deeds. So what are they going to say? Ya laytani, yaqulu, ya laytani. He says, and yaqul, yadullu al istibra. He says over and over again. What does he say? Ya laytani. Oh, what destruction has fallen upon me. Oh my God. 
what have I done to myself? These are my modern contemporary ways of helping you understand what Yalaitana mean, Yalaitani means. Old English would say, woe is me. But we don't understand woe is me anymore. Nobody uses that anymore. Right? What have I done to myself? How, how, did, how, how did I let this happen to myself? I've destroyed myself. And these people are crying over and over again. Then what do they say? Something profound. قَدَّمْتُ لِحَيَاتِي If only, if only, I had invested in the future of my life. قَدَّمْتُ I had sent forward, I had sent savings ahead so I can use them later for my life. What are they calling their life? Their life, real life is in Jannah. I wish I invested for my life. And when they were eating the wealth of the earth, when, when they were not encouraging to give charity, when they were eating the, the inherited wealth altogether, when they loved wealth, wasn't it for their life? But now they realize that wasn't life. This is wa inna dar al akhirah lahi al hayawan. This is real life. Lo kanu yadamu had they only known. So now he's saying, if I only invested for my life, and these people of dunya, when you invest for akhirah, you know what they tell you? Yeah, I know you gave a lot of charity, or you're doing a lot of spending a lot of time for the sake of Allah. You should invest for your future. What they mean by that is for your dunya. And you say, yeah, I'm investing for my future, because that's your real future. Right? And then when they get to that future, they say, I wish I invested for my life. How Allah, how Allah changes perspectives. But at that, at that point, it's too late. And you know, this is why in the previous surah, even we learned, لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُسَيْطِرٍ you're not, you're not there to enforce anything on them. You're not there to enforce anything. They have to remember for themselves. And if they don't, this is what's ahead of them. So we find in Safat al-Tafasir, أَن يَقُولُ نَادِمًا مُتَحَسِّرًا يَا لَيْتَنِي قَدِّمْتُ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا يَنْفَعْنِي فِي الْآخِرَةِ لِحَيَاتِيَ الْبَاقِيَةِ He says, he will say out of humiliation and just this deeply felt regret, if only I had, I had sent forward and acted with righteous deeds that would have benefited me in my hereafter, my real life that is to remain. فَيَوْمَئِذٍ لَا يُعَذِّبُ عَذَابَهُ أَحَدٍ أي ففي ذلك اليوم ليس أحد أشد عذابا أشد عذابا من من تعذيب الله من عصاه سبحان الله. he says uh, in the tafsir we find a shaukani commenting first I'll translate then on that day there will not be anyone to torture anyone the way Allah is going to not anyone will be torturing his the likes of his torture لا يعذب عذابه أحد not the likes of his torture and so the commentary is, on that day there's not going to be anyone who can imagine a more intense punishment than the one Allah has prepared for the one who disobeyed Him. What were the acts of disobedience in this surah? Just take a recall. Just look at the things Allah said are, you think you should be honored, what are the things you do wrong? The, the complaints Allah had waged against these people. And before tughyan, rebellion, rebellion and causing fasad on the earth. Then He says, وَلَا يُوثِقُ وَثَاقَهُ أَحَدٍ you know, if you're being punished and tortured, maybe there's a hope you'll escape and run away. Right? There's, there's that at least in this world, that if there's a bad prison, or somebody's gonna torture you or is hurting you, maybe there's gonna be a window of opportunity where they'll leave the rope or the, the handcuffs loose a little bit, and you might run away. Allah says, وَلَا يُوثِقُ وَثَاقَهُ أَحَدٍ And nobody will tie the, the likes of his tying. Meaning the way he's gonna bond you and wathaq in Arabic, like it's used in Surah Muhammad, fashaddul wathaq. When you capture the criminals, tie them tight. Hold them tight. Meaning these captives of war. So there's no chance of escape. Allah says no, nobody's gonna bond them like Allah's gonna bond them. Nobody's gonna bond them like that, subhanAllah. So this was the case of the criminals. We are reaching the end of the surah now. And there's a profound shift. It is as though in this taghir, this, this, and this change, and this iltifat, this transition, that takes place in the surahs illustrates many things. What it illustrates here is in the previous ayat, we were talking about the rebellious. But it is as though these rebellious are beyond hope. They shouldn't even be talked to anymore. Like Allah was addressing them, and they're so hopeless, He turns away from them to the one that He has hope in. The one that He expects from now. Because this is a lost case. So they shouldn't even be talked to. In Urdu you say, Muni Laga. Right? You don't even address them. You don't even face them. So Allah faces away from them. He turns away from them. And he starts talking to this one, each individual person. He says, Ya ayyatuha nafs al O tranquil, or he, he says, Hey tranquil, or, or calm down and relaxed person. I'm not going to translate soul, because that's a bit of a bit fuzzy thing in English. But anyway, a lot of translations do say soul. But this nafs is something more, right? This, oh, hey you nafs that has now become tranquil and calm. You know where this talk is taking place? It's taking place in Jannah. 
And you know, ya yeah in Arabic is used when you talk to someone. Not when you talk about someone, third person. When you talk to someone, meaning second person. Allah is forcing the reciter of Qur'an to imagine his or herself being addressed by Allah in this ayah. He is forcing us to imagine ourselves in Jannah when Allah is talking to us. SubhanAllah. When He says, Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutma'inna. A satis- oh, you satisfied soul. Oh, satisfied person. Mutma'inna itma'inan in Arabic means to be completely tranquil. How are you tranquil? By the way, this surah was about a person who wasn't tranquil. He was only happy when he had wealth. And as soon as it went away, he was disturbed. And he said, my Lord has humiliated me. But the real slave of Allah, this person, he, he didn't let his nafs get taken away by empty desires. So Allah mentions it in another place, فَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى the one, who feared, the, the one who feared standing before his Lord, and he prevented the nafs from, being, from vanities, from empty desires. Right? So this person is being, Allah is addressing him now, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Addressing them with these beautiful words, tranquil nafs, oh calm, satisfied nafs. This in and of itself illustrates one of the greatest gifts of paradise is itmi'nan. It's this calmness, it's this relaxation. Because this is not something we can ever have in this dunya. If you are ever relaxed in this dunya, it's probably 10 seconds. Or like 5 minutes, where you say, oh. And then something comes in your mind, oh I haven't done this, I haven't done that, I have to do this, I have to do that. Oh my God, I forgot about that. Something keeps coming up. And no matter what you have in this dunya, there's always something you don't have. Right? Always, always. There's something more. There's something more. Nobody's satisfied. Allah says about this person, he's finally satisfied. Like there's no urge to get any more. There's no urge. There's no, I wish I had that. It's already there. 